trajectory of the football again haunting Bills fans. Say how are you folks, Jason Horowitz, glad to be with you on the sports update presented by Toyota. It has been nearly 18 years since Scott Norwood booted the game-winning field goal attempt wide right in Super Bowl 25, but that missed the first of four consecutive losses for the Bills in the Super Bowl. They have still yet to win a title on Monday night, again because of wide right, they may miss the playoffs for a ninth straight year. Now, Ryan Lindell's miss from 47 yards, not the only reason they lost to the Browns, but then again, neither was Scott Norwood's kick, but that's all people will remember. Here's what helped in the loss Monday. Four Bills turnovers, including three by Trent Edwards in the first quarter. Still, though, they had the lead in the fourth until Phil Dawson nailed a 56-yarder with a minute 39 to go. That after the Browns appeared to give up a fourth quarter lead again, just like they did in week 10. But Brady Quinn got his second start, and because of the win, he gets his first career win. Here's what it means for the Bills, who were 5-1, but now have lost four in a row and are in the basement of the AFC East. It also gets worse because they lost three of those four in a row to division opponents, and their chances of making the postseason now just got a lot more difficult. Albert Pujols didn't need to make the playoffs to win his second NL MVP award. The Cardinals' first baseman won despite his team finishing in fourth place, the lowest for an NL MVP winner since Andre Dawson 21 years ago. Ryan Howard of the Phillies finished second. The Dallas Mavericks haven't looked like a playoff team early in this season either, off to a 3-7 and seven start. But owner Mark Cuban has other issues to worry about. Federal regulators have accused him of insider trading by using confidential information to sell stock and avoid a $750,000 loss. The Security Exchange Commission filed a civil lawsuit against the billionaire on Monday, but no determination yet if Cuban will face criminal charges. Back on the court, but really it's back off the court for Tracy McGrady and Ron Artest. Two-thirds of the Rockets star trio out of the lineup and who knows how long. Both injured in Houston's win Monday over Oklahoma City are test with an ankle. McGrady with the same knee that he had offseason surgery. The latter saying until further notice, he's going to shut it down. The two combined to miss 41 games last year and have been injury prone throughout their careers. Kevin Garnett, he's going to miss a game, though just one. Suspended by the NBA Monday for his altercation with Bucks center Andrew Bogut over the weekend, Garnett will sit out tonight's game with the Knicks. Maybe the biggest game tonight, though, in college hoops. The two winning as programs in college basketball tip off, but both missing something. North Carolina, it's All-American Tyler Hansbro. He'll miss the game with a stress reaction, while Kentucky just missing its pride. For a second straight year, taken on opening night last year by Gardner-Webb, this year by VMI. See what Gary Parrish says about the two teams in Parrish's three-pointers here on CBSSports.com. Time for the Woods hits. That not the only big game tonight. 21st ranked Davidson against number 12 Oklahoma. Also the battle of preseason All-Americans, Stephen Curry and Blake Griffin. Big signing early this morning for Memphis. Xavier Henry, picked by many services around the nation as the best high school basketball player in the country for next year's class. He'll be with John Calipari and Steven Jackson already ruled out for week 12. The Rams running back will miss his fourth game in five weeks. So that'll do it for the sports update presented by Toyota for Tuesday, November 18th. Enjoy the night in sports. I'm Jason Horowitz. Take care, folks.